Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about WPML speed optimization tips for WordPress. As you can see here, my website is getting fully loaded time of 560 milliseconds. It's really good. Sometimes it goes till 700 more or less. But yes, it's possible to optimize WPML if you have it in your website. There are still things that I have to find out how to keep it even improving the website speed and also the WPML since now with the core web vitals important for the page speed. You can see here in the case of my website also if you have like well I have like several language around 10 <laughs> languages on my blog then it will add some DOM depth, so I'm still figuring out. But here I will show you the configurations and also the tips that I can give you because it's mainly the to do the improvement if you have WPML as a WordPress multilingual plugin, then yes, you have to take care about the speed since WPML and the translation not stored on your server, then it's not that it really will have a big impact on the website speed, but it's a thing to consider. Like, And if you're really worried about the speed of your WordPress website, then Wiglot will be a better option since Wiglot is stored on their servers and it's connected via an API key. And that's the main difference between WPML and Wiglot also. But if you're looking for some tips that can help you to improve the speed, I will show you the speed optimization that I uh, have here on my WordPress website. And one is statically. This plugin helps to serve the static files through a CDN. And I have just the connection here. When you just install statically, you will be just required to set up the API key once you do the installation and I have here the images so that they can serve also the uh, uh, some images faster through statically. If, if we go here to the waterfall, we can see here that some of the images are served, especially like the logo and some other images like the favicon or some other. So that helps in the performance of the website. These are also some other configurations that I have. Some of the images, as you have seen, they are given as WebP, but also it's also recommended to use your own WebP converter. There are some other online. There is, for example, this Cloud Convert, or you can just Google JPG to WebP if you don't want to use another image optimization plugin. So that's a really good option. Also here in the extra, I have the emoji CDN, the relative path, the CDN, HTTPS, and the remove query. So this is the configuration. I, I got help from a freelancer and these are the setups that I have. Also, I have asset cleanup, Asset cleanup, if you have a pitch builder, such as Elementor or DB, they can help you to set up which elements you should not be loaded or which one you just keep it as normal. It also helps to do the optimization of the CSS files. So here I do have the minification, the combined CSS, also the inline, there are some files that you can exclude or which ones should be inline. So to keep in consideration that adding too much on your CSS inline should make your HTML file bigger. And also the dynamic loaded CSS. In terms of Google fonts, I just, uh, it was removed. I don't load the Google Fonts since sometimes it's called to the fonts Google Apis.com. 
and that of course that might take some time so it's recommended to have the fonts loaded directly on your site also there is some elements uh, from elementor the elementor icons that sometimes they're they it's said that they will be just loaded on some pages that that include the, some icons from Elementor, but I have seen and tested out in my website that sometimes they do load, even if you don't have, or probably they're just like in the corner or in very hidden places of your website. So I just remove it totally, as well as the font awesome icons. So I did this to help also to remove the setup of the Elementor icons. Another one is, of course, the WP Rocket. It's one of the most common cache plugin for WordPress. Really recommend it. I do also recommend it here. I have the cache enabled for mobile devices. In file optimization with the recent update, I set the optimize the CSS delivery as an asynchronously because they have this remove unused CSS, but in my case and in my website, it generated some problems. So I just decided to choose the, or try out the CSS asynchronously and it did help. Also in the JavaScript files, I have the minify JavaScript. In my case, also the combination of JavaScript just generated some internal problems. So I just set it out. Also on the load JavaScript is deferred. For example, I have a cookie notice and I just set it up as excluded. So it's not really loaded after the page is totally loaded. So that also actually help with the totally page loading times. Also with the delay JavaScript execution. And this really help for the above the fold loading times. In media, I do have the images for the lazy load, also for videos and YouTube iframes. But I excluded, for example, favicons or also the logo, or in case I'm using an image for the mobile menu. So I just set this as excluded images. Also, there's might be the need of adding missing image dimensions. Preload, there are some D sets that activated of the preloading for the sitemaps. Also here, enable link preloading. And in the prefetch DNS, I have the request to prefetch statically since some of the images are connected or search via statically. I don't have any advanced rules for the cache. And here on CDN, well, if you have another CDN of your using Cloudflare, you can also have the setup for Cloudflare through WP Rocket. So I have it here in optimal settings. I did the global API key, and that's mainly the, the main connection that I have. If you don't know where to get the global API key, let me show you. You can go here to Cloudflare. You can go, you can get your zone ID. So this one, the zone ID, it's the one that goes right here, if you want the global, you can go to get your API key in here, global API key, just view, and you just copy the API key. So those are the places where you can get this so that, so that WP rocket is connected to Cloudflare. So going back here to Cloudflare, we go here to speed. We go to optimization and the configuration that I have, it's the auto minify, the broadly. 
and the rocket loader so to help the javascript improve loading times another recommendation that i found online was to add some page rules you can actually just create here a page rule this will help to cache faster and have a better time to first byte as you can see here i'm getting 58 milliseconds and it's mainly due to the page rule of cloudflare so it does really help you just can go here to create page rule you just add your domain and you just search for cache level and cache everything if we go back here you said the edge cache also as ttl and also for the back end it's also recommended to bypass the all the work through wordpress so you just said the slash wp admin so these are the recommendations that i give or i can give for the for the wpml speed optimization the ones that i have that are helping me i know that i still have to there there are things that i can still improve on my website especially on the design so that the dom size is even reduced so far it's it's loading really pretty well also it's really important to have a really good hosting i'm using vulture vulture it's a bps hosting that can be used also for wordpress or for many other apps that can be developed and i'm using the high frequency I'm also leaving a link on the description if you want to test out Vulture. It's a $100 credit, so it's a really good amount so that you can start testing out Vulture. I'm using the 80 gigabyte storage plan. So it really does help to have a really good hosting, also to have a high speed website. And in this case, the main focus is not on op really optimizing WPML. It's focusing on optimizing WordPress. I hope that this video helped you. If you have some questions, some comments, of course, some recommendation that I, I'm probably missing, don't hesitate to write down. Thanks for watching.